Welcome to Requirements Elicitation. Today we'll start with the actual requirements engineering process right from the beginning. In the last videos we did cover some preparatory uh, topics where we talked about system, systems, system context, system boundaries and so on. And those were positioned slightly before the actual requirements engineering process as illustrated on this figure. But today we're really going to start with the elicitation process. What are we going to cover in this lecture? First, we're going to talk about getting the right information and why and how it could be quite tricky. Then we're going to start, uh, start talking about requirements sources. And then finally, we'll covering elicitation techniques. A major part of requirements engineering is communication with the goal to extract and properly define the requirements that you need for your project and then successfully implement those requirements. But getting them is a difficult and time-consuming process that can be tricky at best. Usually, when you look at software engineering, you can assume that there is some kind of prior documentation because something existed before. If you are a requirement engineer, you're often in a position where this is not the case, where you build something new or where only limited documentation exists. In the beginning, usually your requirements are unknown. Some of them might be known but are unconscious or they're also often misunderstood. And furthermore, there are different opinions about the requirements. In general, at least one per stakeholder. Sometimes even within a stakeholder, you can have multiple contradicting requirements for the same specific problem. So acquiring those information as part of the requirements engineering activity is called elicitation, getting the right information. And the objective of the elicitation phase is to acquire and get all of those information. So pretty much just knowledge acquisition about involved person and objectives, current state, expectation, domain, and many, many more things. And it's also the first part of the requirements engineering process. And as we stated before in the first lecture, is that communication in itself is tricky. We talked about sender and receiver encoding and decoding information and that there are a lot of uh, different variables involved that can make it complicated. But even if you discard like language barriers and just really think about communication happening via speech where everyone speaks the same language, has the same background, there can still be deviations of what someone would like to have and what the other person actually perceives. So the representation of experience versus perception can be challenging and also the communication of personal reality versus the presentation can cause quite some conflict. There is this famous example of building a chair or a desk or something similar. We represented this now here with a chair-like example. So on the left, you can see the objective reality, what the customer and user uh, would like to have. There is then the perception with the personal reality then you have to present that personal reality using linguistics expression, and then someone has to interpret what you said, and there can be quite some deviations in that process. So it's like pretty much back to this telephone game that we discussed earlier, where you either whisper some pieces of information in someone's ear, or the more extreme version, where you were drawing with a pen of the piece of paper on the back of the person in front of you, thereby trying to convey information. So, pretty much the same story all over again. And communication problems become more difficult if you have to also consider all the stakeholders. The more stakeholders you have, the more diverse they're most likely and the more pieces of information have to come together and communication overhead gets more and more difficult because usually it doesn't make sense to put 100 people in a room. That means you need to split them up and having different types of conversation that you then later have to put back together. So communication in combination with scaling is a problem. Further problem for communications is stakeholders can often not describe what they want in an abstract manner. They can point at something and say, I want you to copy the social network website because I also want to do my own social network. But they cannot really explain this in an abstract manner what they want. They can point at something very often, but the abstract thing is that something that computer scientists usually can do quite well, but a lot of stakeholders struggle with this. They also have problems to discuss why they are doing it, nor what they need to be able to do things. And their requests are much 
more general than you would like to have it as a requirement engineer and as a developer later on. And the presentation of new possibilities and their consequences is, yeah, stakeholders like to keep their existing approaches. So if you present them something new or a new approach, then challenges will be part of this process. It's very difficult to invent new approaches. We'll later in this lecture series also talk about requirement engineering tool support and how you can introduce new tools, new approaches and what to keep in mind. But one of the major challenges that we'll also encounter there is, okay, how do you convince someone to follow a new approach uh, or let them do something that they are not used to do? Um, this is gonna be a core problem throughout the whole requirement engineering process. Within the communication problem in itself, we have further sub-problems, uh, conflicts will occur and make communication even more difficult. Uh, causes of power struggles or cause of opposition against changes can be among those conflicts. Um, priorities must also be communicated because usually the stakeholder has a limited financial or time budget and they want something that cannot be achieved with that budget. So certain requirements and core features have to be prioritized, but then there's gonna be a conflict about which of those requirements to prioritize and also how to communicate which of them has to be communicated. And then changes, stakeholders always add new ideas. You have to at some point make sure that the state of your requirements engineering document becomes somewhat final except for like very serious change requests that need to be accounted for.